All right, Tom, you yeah. guys uh, picked up two, two big wins over Angelo State on the weekend. Kind of just walk us through some things that you liked from the team. Well, we had uh, Zach Toussaint and Parker Nielsen were making their first starts as Hugo is out with an injury right now and, and John was out with some with, uh, COVID. Um, and so, you know, it's, it, it was tough because we were a little bit smaller. You know, not starting our four and our five was, was really tough. But then on the flip side, offensively, we maybe get a little more spark there with Zach knocking down some shots. And Parker actually made some, some buckets for us as well and played good defense. So I was really proud of those two guys. And then, you know, John L., JoJo, and, and Quay were their normal selves and played really, really well. And, you know, COVID, uh, Quay was coming off uh, of being out too as well. So we were a little concerned about him. But I thought he looked fantastic this weekend. What kind of confidence do you have in your team after so much time off of playing actual games to come out and perform as well as you did? Yeah, it's a pretty good question. You know, it's you just never know sometimes with your team. It's when you've had those layoffs and then you've got some starters out, it's it's how will they respond. And I think our guys really took it to heart. I thought uh, guys coming in off the bench like Kavon Booker, who doesn't play much, played really well. Uh, Hayden got back into the game. Uh, he was starting a little bit for us at the beginning of the year, and, and he, I thought he played well. Um, you know, and, and you need a full team to really be good. And so those guys, as well as, as Calvin, and, and then John Brown is back now. So we've got a pretty good team. Um, I don't think we're overconfident. I think we have good confidence, but we've got some games coming up here in Midwestern. We went over and scrimmaged them earlier in the year, and they actually beat us over at their place in the scrimmage. So. We've got some tough games coming up for us, uh, Western New Mexico on Tuesday and then Midwestern back-to-back -back Thursday, or excuse me, Thursday and Saturday on the weekend. With your concern about the games, the schedule postponements, how great was it to get a Western New Mexico onto the schedule this week? Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. You know, we've, we've lost a lot of games with COVID this year and, you know, to get the two against Angelo was great and then to get Western, hopefully they, you know, everything goes, goes through and we get to play Tuesday at 2.30. But uh, you know, it was great to get them on the schedule. You need 11 games to get in the national tournament and the conference tournament. And you know, we've, we've got to get there because you just never know what's going to happen. It could be on our end. It could be on the other team's end. And you might not get to 11. Now, there is a waiver that you can apply uh, if you don't get to 11. But we still have to win ball games. I mean, there's a lot of really good teams in our, in our league with Kingsville, Dallas Baptist, Lubbock, Midwestern, um, you know, St. Edwards, Edwards is right there. And so it's, it's a very good league. And then we're going to be with the GAC, which we have a little um, knowledge about. We played Oklahoma Baptist at our place this year. But they're going to be, you know, they'll get three teams in probably, two or three teams in. And we'll hopefully we'll get two or three. Now, they're only taking six from each region this year. So it's a little bit smaller. You, you want to try to get in. And then if you're lucky enough to get the one or the two, then you can get a bye as well. And so it's the most important thing is try to get into the regional, stay healthy, and then if you're lucky enough, try to get that number one or number two seed. Uh, the regional this year too, since you asked, is going to be um, a predetermined site, and that'll come out, I believe, this week or next week. And I'm not sure where that's at. I'm hoping it's right here in Canyon, but uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. Worst so, case scenario, you can pull in Ohio State, right? And just. Well, yeah, we don't want to do that. But no, worst case scenario is we don't get in the national tournament, and that would be that'd be tough. You know, if, if we go lose a couple ball games, then you're gonna have to win the conference tournament because there are, you know, like I said before, it's you know Lubbock is undefeated, Kingsville has one loss, uh, Dallas Baptist has two losses, I believe, and then we're right there. So that's that's four teams just in our league, and now somebody wins a conference tournament, that can knock out a team. We've got to really stay focused, and we got to keep playing and, and, and still pick up some Ws here. So on Saturday, you missed your first 10 three-pointers. What was the message to the team after, like, during that stretch where you guys couldn't make we it? We missed our first 10? Yeah. We shouldn't have shot anymore. So what did we finish then? <laughs> you made the next, like, 13 out of 17, I think. Okay, that's pretty good, 13 out of 17. Hopefully we don't have that long stretch. But, you know, we shot it really well on, on Thursday as well, school record 21 threes. I think in 36 attempts, so that's a really high percentage as well. You know, there's a lot of interesting little stats that kind <clears> of <throat> came out this weekend. Saturday, John Brown, without any time going off the clock, scored seven points. So he made his bucket, that's two points, got fouled, and then he shot four free throws, four technicals, made all four, and then he made his and one. So he had seven points. I don't even know if Reggie Miller or anybody 
and the NBA has done that. But I'd have to check. Maybe you can find that out, Tyson, for us. Seven points, no time coming off the clock for, for JB. So pretty, tough. Pretty cool. Uh, now, sorry, speaking of interesting stats, I mean, Zach just signs, you, you said that, what a record – six three-pointers in that game. I mean, do you, when you send them out, are you just like, hey, you know what, man, if you see an open look, just take it. Don't even question it. Well, you know, a lot of our guys have, have the green light, you know, and, and some are bright green and some is kind of a, a dim lime green. But, uh, you know, Zach has got the bright green light. And so he's, what that does is it really just, you know, now you have to stay out and defend him. And now you've got JoJo Quay and John L. All right, you're going to stay out there. Now we're going to play four on four. It's a lot easier to get to the bucket. Then they kick it out to one of their buddies. They knock it down, and it's kind of just a re rinse and repeat, so to speak. But, yeah, Zach's got green light. You know, so does JoJo, though. Hayden, very good shooter. You know, Parker knocked some threes down this weekend. And then Quay's actually a really, really good shooter as well. So, uh, And then John can get a shot off whenever he wants. So it's, it's hard to defend. You kind of pick your poison there. So speaking of stats, um so JoJo and Clay are the only teammates in Division Two basketball to average over twenty-eight and four. Okay. I mean, just talk about like what. I mean, they headline it, but I mean, what what else do you like? What do you see from them that just makes this team so good? Well, I think you know lately too, we've been really sharing the basketball, and that's something that you know it's when when you're scoring twenty points a game, you might have thirty one night, maybe only have ten or twelve the next night. And I don't think our guys get down or worried about that because they know they're going to score. And other teams will take them or try to take them away a little bit, and that's where you need a Zach Tucson, you know, Hayden, John Brown, Kavan, JT, some of those guys to step up. They're going to get open looks, and let's knock them down. So I think Quay and JoJo are very unselfish, you know, but we need them to score. You know, they, they've got to score. If they don't score, then, then we're in trouble. But if teams are really taking them away, you know, kind of like they did the Hill yesterday, putting two guys on him, well, that's going to leave somebody else open. We've got a good team, but we'll make you pay for that. So I think just being unselfish, you know, I think Quay had maybe 10 or 12 rebounds this weekend as well, and JoJo had, I think, 13 maybe on Thursday. Um, and then John L., you know, you throw him in there too, and just a great defensive player. Now he's got to take care of the ball a little bit more. Uh, he's a little loose with it sometimes. He's a better ball handler than what he's shown lately, but uh, he can really, kick can really play. You mentioned losing the scrimmage to Midwestern. What did you see in that scrimmage you think you can learn from and what challenges did they present? Yeah, they, they played zone, and I think that's something we really didn't work on a zone a lot uh, at the beginning of the year. And, and, you know, we went over there, and they're big, they're strong, they can really shoot it. They've got a junior college kid or a, a transfer kid that came in, and you know, he can really light it up from three. They're going to be a very tough matchup for us just because of their size, and they really stretch that zone out. We're going to have to score inside whether that's off the dribble or throwing it in and maybe Kavan or JB uh, or even throwing it into Quay or JoJo or whoever. But we've got to score inside and out. We can't just shoot threes the whole game because they're going to extend that defense and it'll be, it'll be really tough for us. And we've got to get the game going up and down a little bit. You know, they're going to slow it down, run their sets. And like I said, they're big, pretty big, they're pretty strong, and they're going to be very physical on Thursday and Saturday.